everyone and thanks for tuning into this video from red tape translation and if you're not already make sure to follow us on your favorite social media channels don't forget to ring the bell so you never miss a beat Lioba and I are here to share with you some German culture, Der Erste Mai. So I'm from the US and when I moved to Berlin, I was like, cool, a day off. What, why do we have this day off? And my friends were like, um, yeah, it's, it's workers day. And that was, it. that's all I got. And I said, okay, well, how do we celebrate this holiday? And uh, the response was, well, we go to the park and we enjoy the sun and we drink beer. Oh, and there are some protests and marches going on. Yeah, <laughs> but that was it. So I've been here now almost seven years and I have gained no more knowledge on the subject. So Yoba is here today as a German native to share with us what this holiday actually is and what are some of the traditions that you find in different parts of Germany. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to read some responses from our followers and from the team. Hello, thank you for joining me today. <laughs> Hi, Bri, nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, you too. So what is the deal with May Day, the 1st of May? Yes, my... Yeah, I mean, uh, the 1st of May is actually a national holiday in a lot of German-speaking countries or Central European countries, and it's called Tag der Arbeit, as in the day of work. <laughs> Also, you could just call it Labor Day, but not to be confused with the American Labor Day, obviously. So it also kind of goes back to a workers' movement. And I mean, Germany has always been very big on socialist and social democratic movements in the past kind of 150 years. And 1st of May was established as a day where workers would fight for their right to have an eight-hour working day. You know, if we think back to the first decades of the industrial age a work day could be up to 16 hours or even longer but workers said no we have a right to only work eight hours per day and to also have some free time so okay. that is actually what that day is all about about the rights of workers in the bigger cities like berlin or in other parts especially in the north and the east of germany it's still a day of protest um that's you know against the establishment it's for more social rights and There are some people who, you know, want to vent a little. Okay. <laughs> that's I mean, why in Berlin, everyone's a little bit scared when that day comes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> This explains then my experience with the marches and the protesting. So, okay, I get it. Great. Yeah. <laughs> If you're in Berlin, stay away from the most crowded areas because you might have a Molotov cocktail coming your way. Like that, that can happen. <laughs> But it's, um, yeah, Berlin has a very big tradition, I think, of demonstrating and protesting, maybe because it's the capital, maybe because the city has such a rich political history and so many things always happen here. But where I'm from, I'm from the deep, deep west of the country, almost close to Belgium and the Netherlands, the area around Cologne. I never actually celebrated 1st of May as the Workers' Day, but we always celebrated the Tanz in den Mai dancing into May. So it was more a, and still is, a spring celebration. You welcome spring that really fully starts with May. And in my area, that was actually paired up with a tradition of matchmaking. Matchmaking and spring celebration. Hey, why not make this one, one holiday? <laughs> well, you know, so, uh, spring we loves celebrate the more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more about drinking and flowers, and we have a tradition where you have to place a tree, actually a birch tree, in front of the window of the person you adore. So, uh, yeah, everyone Wait. would wake up. How like many of these no, trees? No, a long tree. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> like five person size tall. tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean... Um, <laughs> on the countryside, lots of people have houses, and okay. usually the bedrooms are on the second floor or so. You would usually, just a few days before 1st of May, you would go into the woods, find a nice tall birch, <laughs> you would cut it off, and then carry it to the house of your loved one or adored one, and then you would put it right next to the window. So um, in the morning of 1st of May, you would open your window and be like, did I get a tree? Do I have an admirer? How many scooters do I have? That was actually a thing, and it sounds so insane when I think about this now, 
that even 15 years ago when I was still in high school, we would, you know, come back to school and be like, did you get a May tree? Who was it from? And it felt so insane. I could not imagine ever doing this again. But that was actually All I keep thinking is, oh my God, the environment. You're cutting down all these trees for nothing. (laughs) At first I thought, oh, it's a tree in a pot. I'm like, that's nice. But no, that's like Christmas round two, like cut down the tree. (laughs) No, it's very true. And the thing is, um, it's not legal to get these trees from the wood. It's it's not legal. No, that's why people go and do it at night. It's a Um, very, very (laughs) sexist tradition. I mean, a lot's Lots of traditions aren't necessarily free of discrimination, but this one is incredibly terrible. Just a couple of days before 1st of May, all the bachelors, and so all the single men from a village would come together. Usually they would meet in some sort of like dive bar or like a pub, <laughs> and they'd have a list of all the single women over 18 years old. And then they would have an auction on all those women. So uh, whoever pays the most money for a woman gets her. I'm not making this up. This is, this is, I mean, it's a tradition that's kind of fallen asleep a bit. I'm not mad about that. I was just going to ask you, they still do this? I don't, I don't think they still do it in the village that I'm from. But I think until I was like maybe 16, 17 or so, that still happened. I don't think it's happening anymore. Um, It was a celebration. And I mean, growing up, like, especially when I was a kid, that was always a big event because Mm -hmm. eventually the man who pays the most money for a woman, he becomes the May King. And the Mm -hmm. woman he got, the woman he bought... (laughs) She becomes the May Queen, and then they would, you know, go around the villages in a carriage, and you'd have the kids holding flowers and then everything. So it it had that kind of idea of matchmaking, but also a celebration. Do you know Um, where this money would go? Like, would it at least go to a good cause? (laughs) We're talking about the German countryside. The only thing that money is invested in is Kölsch, the local beer. (laughs) <laughs> um, it was really for nothing else. No, it was just for beer. It was just an excuse for men to get drunk. I remember my dad, like he says, this used to be a great celebration when he was a kid, when he was a teenager. It was just the whole village involved. Like everyone made sure that the village looks nice. Yeah. People would put mm-hmm. wreaths around their doors and everything. Um, but it turned more and more into just kind of a big drinking event. The intentions were in the right place, bring the community together, hanging out. But I think auctioning women is never a good idea, so. I mean, was it at least um, voluntary? Was it at least voluntary? Like, yes, I would like my name to be on the list. I mean, really, what's the difference between, there's not much difference between that and like, okay, Cupid or Bumble or Tinder. <laughs> I don't think it was voluntary, no. I, I somehow didn't even know when they had that going on. It was a weird thing. But I mean, my, my, like my dad tells me that for some people in the village, this was just kind of the, the final step. So they already liked someone and maybe there was some flirting already. And mm-hmm. and that this, this tradition was just kind of giving them the last kick in the butt that they needed to go and confess their love. A little that bit it was of never liquid just... courage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> To be like, hey, so I bought you yesterday. Um, <laughs> wow. I mean, okay. The dancing into May, the wreath, the celebration is great. We just can get rid of some of the sexist things. Yeah. Yeah. We, because we had another tradition where um, just different families in the village, they would have a tree in their garden. They mm-hmm. also cut that one down. So still bad. Mm -hmm. Um, But we would decorate the tree and everything, and then we'd have a bonfire around it. And um, those are some of the nicest childhood memories I have, because we were just, like, we had a little little cabin right in our garden, and we'd invite all of our friends, and we'd have all the food around, and my mom came with her guitar, and we'd sing songs from the 60s. but that was always really nice. Um, we call this Maibache. So we kind of guarded the May tree. And okay. then at some point during the night, we would sneak out and try and steal another May tree from <laughs> another family. 
So you would always kind of check, is there a may tree still there the next morning? Because maybe someone cut it down and stole it from you. So I feel like, I mean, there were nice moments in there, you know, sitting around the bonfire, eating potato salad and (laughs) sausages. Obviously, what would a German tradition be without sausages, right? Um, So these are the traditions that are from like your region. Are you aware of, or can you tell me any? about any other traditions in parts of Germany or meetings of this day? Yeah, I know that some regions also celebrate Walpurgisnacht, which is kind of a a witch circle. (laughs) Um, So people dress up as witches and they come together. And um, I think this also has a tradition of chasing the evil spirits of winter away. And, um, you know, welcoming spring, but making sure that all the evil stays outside. And yeah, but but it really comes from an idea of witches coming together. Uh, I don't think any trees are being cut down to this, at least. (laughs) Love it. Everyone gets their sage and starts running around. Well, Leo, but thank you so much for your insight and for these weird traditions. Now I have a little bit more insight on what traditions I will want to keep doing or start doing and what ones I think I'm just going to leave behind. Thanks for joining me. Maybe you'll have a tree waiting in front of the window on May 1st. I hope it's in a pot. I don't know if you were keeping track, but my U.S. American brain was keeping track of all the things that reminded me of something that people celebrate in the United States. So basically, my conclusion is you can (laughs) celebrate however you want to, (laughs) so long as you're not cutting down trees or selling women. Okay, so as promised, I'm going to read some of the submissions that we got from our Instagram following, and also some submissions from our own team. Let's get started. I remember my first first of May in Berlin. I lived in the heart of Kreuzberg. The weather was beautiful. We sat in a Bratwurst and Brötchen, drank beer, and watched crowds of and watch crowds rioting. <laughs> Someone threw Molotov cocktails into our U-Bahn carriage and vandalized the new development across the road from my apartment. I was enthralled and terrified at the same time. Now I have kids, so I'm mainly grumpy and avoidant of crowds. Didn't the supermarket get burned to the ground once? <laughs> Another one is, we used to live directly on the Turmstrasse and any kind of marches, marathons, bike races would always pass down there as it's on the long drag that leads to the Siegesäule. So the 1st of May, there was always a protest march and Turmstrasse, being Turmstrasse, you just kind of got out of the way. May Day is also celebrated in the UK and is a bank holiday, but it's more of a tea and sandwiches affair than a protest and riot. So a real Berliner. The truth is, no one really celebrates this. Everyone is kind of aware of the meaning, but celebrating it in a capitalist society? I don't know. It's just one of those few days off you get here. It was more important before the wall came down, but involuntarily. So I'm glad I don't have to go to marches. Actually, I talked to a student of mine. She said a similar thing. Before the wall came down in the GDR, it was... You didn't have a choice. It was absolutely necessary that you had to go out and protest. It it wasn't a choice. This is a good one. The first time I ever tried smoking was sitting on a dumpster in Sternschanze in Hamburg, watching people set fire to cars on my first ASMI in Germany. My buddy said, wow, normally the riot police are here by now, which my girlfriend and I took as our cue to leave. Good decision. We went to a quiet playground and made out on a bench until 5 a.m. ASMI is great. <laughs> Thank you so much to those of you who sent in your experience. Wishing you a safe and meaningful Asta Mai.